Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to Triple N Media I am Dr Nick Nickam and today we are going to look at carotid artery disease we are going to learn more about what causes plaque build up in the carotid arteries how does it present how do we examine the patients with carotid artery disease what kind of tests we do to diagnose carotid artery disease and what kind of treatment options are available uh, for patients with carotid artery disease and finally follow up all right here we have a diagram of a carotid artery uh, as you can see here we have the carotid main carotid artery which divides into the internal carotid artery going inside the brain and the external carotid artery and this is known as the carotid bulb it looks like a bulb that's why it's called a carotid bulb and if you look inside this is a normal looking carotid artery with no evidence of any plaque build up but here is a carotid artery with a uh, thick fatty yellow substance that is built up like a mount at the bifurcation this is the most common place for carotid artery plaque build up the plaque consists of cholesterol calcium platelets and proliferation of the smooth muscle cells and as the plaque uh, builds up the lumen of the carotid artery becomes narrower and narrower and when it reaches a critical level like 70 80% then people can manifest with uh, symptoms what are the symptoms of a carotid artery disease patients with carotid artery disease may present with uh, dizziness weakness sometimes a loss of muscle power in one side of the body or the other and when patients present with these symptoms it is very prudent to make sure that we listen to the carotid arteries it takes less than a minute to listen to the carotid arteries if you are over 50 or 60 years old make sure your doctor listens to your carotid arteries to see any evidence of what we call bruit Bruit is nothing more than a turbulent sound produced by narrowing of uh, any arterial segment. It's just like a water pipe. When wa- water is flowing smoothly, you don't hear much noise inside the pipe. But when you, as soon as you squeeze, you hear that shh, shh. That's exactly when if you have a carotid artery stenosis and you put the stethoscope and you can listen to that, you will hear shh. and when we hear that sound that is a signal that there could be narrowing inside the carotid artery and the next step would be how are we going to diagnose carotid artery disease the simplest non invasive test is known as the carotid duplex scan or ultrasound scan which is done in any doctor's office or in a hospital setup the duplex scan takes about uh, 10 15 minutes and this looks at the arterial structure it looks at the arterial structure and it also looks at the velocity of the blood flow across a narrowed segment of a carotid artery let's look at some example here is a duplex scan ultrasound scan of a carotid artery as you can see there is build up of this uh, plaque which is like a mount on both sides and here is the normal size of the artery and you can see how critically this artery is blocked in addition to that blood flow across the artery and any time there is a turbulence mosaic style of uh, color disturbance in the color flow doppler of the carotid artery in addition to looking at the artery structurally we are also going to look at the velocity across the narrowed segment as you can see the velocity here is any like 286 cm per second the normal velocity across an internal carotid artery which is going to the brain should be less than 125 cm per second so this velocity is almost more than double that tells us there may be more than 75 to 79% blockage in this carotid artery and when we see the doppler ultrasound showing such drastic findings uh, obviously the patient is referred for either a an angiogram which is uh, done by placing catheters from the groin that goes all the way into the neck 
or by a simple uh, CT angiography or an MRI. Let's look at some examples here. Here is an angiogram done during a cardiac catheterization. You can see a critical narrowing here and we'll come back to this picture in a minute. Let's look at some other pictures. Here is an, an example of an MRI and you can see the critical stenosis of the internal carotid artery at its origin. Okay, what are the different types of treatments available for patients with carotid artery disease? There are two major kinds of treatments that are available for managing patients with carotid artery stenosis. The first one is of course the carotid endarterectomy surgery. This has been around for like 30-40 years. There are excellent results uh, uh, documented in the literature about the carotid endarterectomy and the more recent one is of course uh, carotid stenting and we are going to look at both. Uh, here is a diagrammatic representation of uh, how a carotid artery endarterectomy or surgery is uh, performed. Arterectomy means repair of an artery. Here is an example of a plaque buildup in the carotid artery at the bifurcation and the surgeons open up this carotid artery then scoop out all the plaque that is there, clean up the artery and while the surgery is going on, this artery is blocked so no debris can get into the brain and cause a mini stroke or anything like that. Once all the plaque and the, all the debris are removed, a patch is applied to expand the size of the artery and it is sutured in place. Generally the surgery takes about uh, an hour to two hours and most of the time patients spend no more than one to three days in the hospital. This is a stent. This is a wire mesh. So this is a wire mesh and you can see this is mounted on a balloon and it is placed at the site of the plaque uh, formation. Let's look at some examples. Okay, here is a diagrammatic representation of uh, how a carotid stent is placed. First, a catheter is brought all the way. A catheter is brought and through the catheter, a guide wire is passed, which has uh, like a, an umbrella basket at the top to prevent any clot or debris from going inside the brain. And, and here is the plaque buildup. A stent is placed in position and is expanded, but before that, generally a balloon is passed through this wire and it is inflated so that it compresses the plaque and improves the lumen size of the carotid artery. And once the stent is placed, all the catheters and the guide wires are all removed and this is an interventional procedure. This is done in the hospital. Generally, you may end up spending 24 hours in the hospital if everything goes fine. And here are some examples. As you can see, there's a critical narrowing in panel A. And in panel B, you can see the tip of the catheter and a guide wire and a stent which is being uh, uh, manipulated. After the placement of the stent in panel C, you can see the lumen is considerably improved compared to the lumen in panel A. Here is another example of a, a, not only a critical stenosis but also an ulceration in the plaque that is obstructing the carotid artery. And then here is a picture B and C which is after the placement of a, a carotid stent. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, follow-up is as important as diagnosing carotid artery disease and managing carotid artery disease. Most of the patients after carotid artery surgery are placed on antiplatelet agents such as aspirin and most importantly Plavix or Clopidogrel. You also need regular duplex scans to see if there has been a progression of disease over a period of time or if there is development of disease on the other side. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a brief overview of carotid artery disease. One of the most significant complications of carotid artery disease could be a stroke. So it takes only a minute or two of a doctor's time to check the neck. If there is any evidence of brewing, the next step would be to do an, a duplex scan of the carotid uh, artery, which takes about 10 to 15 minutes. And if everything looks okay, uh, you need to be followed. If, but if there is evidence of uh, 
critical stenosis, then doing a CAT scan or an MRI followed by surgery or stent placement can dramatically reduce the stroke incidence. I hope this has been useful to you. If you would like to see educational programs on any other cardiovascular problems, please leave a comment below and, and please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we also have a Facebook page, which is a triple N media. And we would like you to please visit our page and like our page. I am Dr. Nick Nickham. You have been listening to carotid artery disease and this is a triple N. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much.